for our taxi is uh, just a safe distance behind the other airplane. And by safe distance, I don't mean chewing the other guy's tail off up here. Keep a minimum of three or four airplane lengths behind so that if the lead has to stop quick or something, you can stop this just so that there's nothing there. Okay? Uh, we're pretty good in the nose wheel airplanes, but Perry has to uh, S turn a little bit to, for him, so uh, you can just do it accordingly. And we'll taxi out for <coughs> take off. I'm not sure which, which runway did you use. 30. 30? 30. Okay, so yep. it's probably 30 again. So uh, we go out for, for run up position. In the run up position, go out. Lead pulls into his run-up position, number two and number three, pull in the run-up positions. And don't be too far away from him, pull right up reasonably close to him so that, so that you can see hand signals and so on. Pull up into your run-up position, do your run-ups individually, and when the run-ups are completed, Lead looks over at two and three, and two and three will give a thumbs up that their uh, run-up is complete and they're ready to go. Once that's done, lead will call us over to tower frequency. So uh, once again, it will be Ravens go 1, 2, 4.7, 2, and 3. Acknowledge. You've acknowledged that he wants a, a signal or a frequency change. So now, well, as soon as you've acknowledged, then you all switch to 124.7. Once you're on 124.7, 2 and 3 just say 2 and 3. And you don't need Raven 2? Just 2 You don't two. have to say the Raven after that first time. Okay? <coughs> just, just on the, uh, when everybody's ready, number 2, make sure that number 3 is ready before he gives a signal to. Yeah, for the run up. So, right. Ernie. You would look at him and make sure he's ready. And then you can give the lead. Just like a change. Yeah. Okay. Uh, once we're ready for going out, then we'll vote for takeoff. Probably be airborne before before you will, but I can stay low and power back until you you're airborne and up. Mm, okay. Or just lag a little bit. Yeah. And okay. I would suggest. The only, yeah. The only problem is when, <laughs> once he is airborne, then he's he's gone. So I, I guess what would you have to do once you're airborne if you can keep it around yeah, 140, 140 knots. Until we're all caught Oh, up. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Definitely. I think it's best if you to use a bit of a reduced power once you're yep. airborne. Reduce your yep. power, Charles. Okay. And you don't want to take off before me, though. Because no, then no. then you, I could come up into you. Right? I mean, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't yeah, want... No, if I you're behind me and, yeah. and off the ground already, I won't know where you are anymore. So you got to stay oh, on the okay. ground until I get off the okay. ground. Yeah. Just let me roll a little more. Right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think we are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would suggest, seeing as you probably aren't going to be really in a good position right now, first get in, that you both bring your undercarriage up into vision. That we bring what? Undercarriage. Bring your gear up individually rather than the lead calling for gear oh, up. Okay.
Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you have two similar type airplanes, the signal would normally be you're expected to be in good formation here, and you would then make a signal like this for gear up and then nod your head, and that's the time to go up and pick up the gear. But seeing as you're dissimilar airplanes, I suggest you just bring your gear up on your own. Okay. And you're using flap for takeoff as well, so you can use your flap the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, if, I'm at, uh, uh, when, if my gear down, it stays there at 120. That's about all I can get. Until well, I my gear up. pull up when you're ready. Because I may leave my gear down a little bit to just hold my speed yeah. down. So just go for your, get just use your own plan to get to 140. Yeah. Right? Okay, on that? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Perry, I would suggest as number three that you allow a vote. Four seconds before we'll air well down the runway when you start your takeoff roll and you start your takeoff roll and I would suggest that uh, you Charles climb to uh, say 500 feet and then commence a turn mm -hmm. it'll be off three zeros it'll be left turn commence a left turn mm -hmm. okay and just turn about 90 degrees don't mm -hmm. turn more than that and Perry you will be, you'll be up here turning like this. You'll be down here. You'll be a little behind. So he's going up this way. So you can be going in like this to, to form up on him. We're going up south. This is what you're... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we won't rush it once we're all formed up out there. Uh, you don't have any trouble, your speeds are, you don't have any trouble. You guys have been flying together a lot more than I have. Yeah. So. Well, if we can keep it, uh, <clears throat> like, sweet spot is about 175 miles an hour. So, what's that translate to in knots? Be 145, <laughs> if we get 150 knots, that would be good. 150. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah. So one, Indicated airspeed. So that's 15 percent. So that's 165. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I would say 145 or so. Yeah. In that area, yeah. it should be good. You can fly that. that. Yep, I can fly that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so we'll head we'll head straight out south and we'll get formed up. They they have a restriction on us normally to not above 2,500 in the zone. So if I were you, I'd level out at 2,500, Charles, mm -hmm. on the way out here until we get outside the zone for five miles or so. Once we're all settled in out there, and you settle in, Perry, on the left-hand side, there's number three, all right? And once we're all settled in out there, I don't think we'll do a whole lot of, of, of playing around. We'll switch leads that time so that we can give Charles a little more time on the formation side. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Ernie, you and I will take the lead <coughs> next. Okay? So Charles, once we're established going out there, we can do a couple of turns mm -hmm. and the signals for your turns, if you're going to turn right, hand up, mm -hmm. or left, Make sure you do a good lookout because you're looking out for the aircraft. Mm -hmm. And then we'll head out, do a few turns, mm -hmm. but we won't take too long at that. We'll switch over the lead to Ernie and I'll take the lead. Okay. Then. You want a, like a 360 each way and then and change leads? Or are you stuck with just 90 degree turns? 90 degree turns, mm -hmm. sure. 90. Okay. So, when we're happy to switch leads now, both frequency change once we're up there, because we're going to be doing maybe going over, so we'll monitor, once we're well established out there, mm -hmm. we have to clear the zone on 124.7, so stay on 124.7 until we're about five miles out, mm -hmm. okay? okay, that's the edge of the zone, mm -hmm. so once you clear the zone, and you just give Windsor a call, say Raven Formation clearing your zone to the south. Okay. Okay? 
once we're clear of the zone and you've done a couple of turns, then we'll switch leads. Now before we switch leads, I would suggest that we do our frequency change to one, two, three, seven, five. Mm -hmm. So once again, it's the same thing. Raven go, Flight, go one, two, three, seven, five. Raven two says two, you say three. Once you've heard that everybody is, has checked in, now you go over to one, two, three, seven, five. When we're doing a frequency change, move out slightly, okay? You don't want to stay in real close because you've got your head down in the cockpit switching radios. So move out slightly while you make your radio change, okay? No question. So move out, make your radio change. As soon as you've got your, you've gone over to radio change, don't rush it, but then two and three. Check in. So now we knows that everybody's on frequency and that we're all set. Okay. Now we've done a couple of turns out here, and now we're going to switch lead. At switch lead now, we'll be still in a big formation. And we can switch lead two ways. We can either call for it on the radio or we can do it visually. I would suggest we get in the habit of doing it visually as long as we're in reasonably good formation. <laughs> if we're too far away to be seeing the guy in the front, then it doesn't work. So we're on a good frequency, we can use it. So I'll leave that up to you, Charles. Okay. If you think Ernie's in good enough position here that he can see your hand signals, we'll switch lead. And you just point at him and then up like that. Yep. Okay? Yep. At that, Ernie will move out slightly and move up here. So that's it's a good idea for echelon me left, right? To call Raven's renumber. Okay? So you call on the radio Raven's renumber. So now this one will be Charles, and he will now be number two. And Perry will still stay as number three. Okay. <coughs> so now we're in an echelon port, which isn't really desired because the only way we can do turns are away from it, to mm -hmm. the right. Mm -hmm. So now we'll want to get back on the Vic formation. Now. This is where we want to keep our elements together because eventually we'll be probably doing four plane. So in order to keep our elements together, we'll give the signal to go to Vic. Number two now is still with his lead number one. So it'll be number two that moves over here. Mm, okay. okay? Okay. So Charles, you will then move over to the right hand side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the signal for that move will be, if it's a radio signal, it would be Raven's Govic formation, or I would suggest that we brief and do hand signals as long as they're working okay. It will be a one pump with the hand. And the one pump with the hand means that number two responds. Okay? 
So just hand up like that. So Ernie, you will be giving a signal. We will be putting our hand up like this, and at that, Charles will back off slightly, move over here. As number two. And then number three, Perry, you will then move up into the other big position here. So the lead gives the the pump pump. And really just a solid fist just close. A solid. I acknowledge with the same? No. No need to acknowledge. No, just just to act. Okay. Okay. All right. When he gives when it's a one pump signal, it's a signal for number two. If there's a two hand like that, that's a signal for number three to move. And you go to echelon. Oh, okay, so, okay. So and what's the two pump look like? You mean hand up, hand down, hand up, hand down, or yeah. something? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. So. So well, how does, I'm just curious about this. So if three is to move, does two relay that signal to three, or does three just? Yeah, well, we're, you're in a VIC right now. You're in a VIC right now, so there isn't any requirement to do that. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha, okay. gotcha. Okay. Now, if, if you're in an echelon formation, one, two, three, four sort of thing, yeah. then if lead wants number three to move back over to the other side, he would then give the two pumps. And number two then passes that number two pump on to number three, who's out on the other side of it, so he okay. can see it. Okay. Gotcha. I want to keep it as simple as we can on this first one, so I yep. think I think we'll probably only chase the lead the once, and we'll come back that way. Okay, because I, it, it's going to get very involved if we switch around twice. So we'll only change the lead once on the thing. So here we are. We're in big formation. Ernie, now you, you and I are the lead. <coughs> Number Charles is number two, and Perry is still number three. Now, we'll do a few turns, like this, and the secret, I think you've done a fair bit since we flew together, Charles, but our problem before was, and I'm not being critical, but yeah. we were always back a little far, yeah. and I think you've done a fair bit since then, so move it up so that we're in a reasonable position here, mm -hmm. so that you can see the, the signals on okay. us. Okay, we'll do a few turns around there, and then we'll probably go into uh, trail. I always call it line of stern from my back days, but uh, fast calls it trail formation. So trail formation will be number two here, and number three back here. Trail formation is <coughs> slightly low, tail nose clearance there, and you just come back here. So the signal to go trail, if it's radio, it would be just, uh, I'm, we're going to do, uh, try and stick with visual signals, if it was radio signal, it would be Raven's go trail formation. At that, number two falls back in here in the line of stern or into trail, and number three falls back in as number three. Okay? Does uh, number three wait until <coughs> number two is in position and then. Like he waits that? until he sees number two is back and in position and then he comes back in. Okay? okay? He could fall back slightly and in preparation, but don't make the move until number two is up in position. In, in the trail position, there's no necessity to uh, make any signals for turns or anything. So all you do is go around, do your turns, do whatever you like. And as fast says, all the turns can be up to 45 degrees of bank. Now today we haven't practiced a lot of that, so we're not going to be doing 45 degree bank turns. But everything
everything that they train for is up to 45 degrees of bank. So we will limit our turns to something 30 or less. Mm -hmm. Go around here, doing our thing. Once we come back to signal back into Vic formation, Ernie, you're, you're, we're in the lead now, and what you do is a wing wobble. Okay? So just wobble your wings, and at that point, number two will now move back up here, and number three will move back up here. Okay, by this time the arms are going to be getting tired, so <laughs> just remember that you can give, you know, if you get really tired, you can give control to Jimmy or, or we, can, we can switch around a little bit that way. Mm -hmm. So at this stage we're probably going to be thinking about coming back here. So when we're coming back, Ernie, uh, the call to the, we will now have for the tar frequency. <coughs> so, tell me what your radio calls are going to be to get them over on 1247. Uh, Raven formation frequency change 1247. Uh, you don't have to say Raven formation frequency change. It's just Ravens go 1247. Okay? And then they acknowledge 2 and 3. And then as soon as they've acknowledged, then they all go 124.7. Okay. Once they're on 124.7, we each acknowledge. Two and three. Okay. Does three wait until after two is acknowledged? Yeah. So Generally, give, hold, uh, hesitate until two does come in, but if he, if he waits too long, just go ahead and say three, and that way lead knows, well, it seems we got a problem here. With number two or something like that. Okay. So we're back. We're on one two four point seven, and Ernie's going to set us up so that we're going to be calling initial for a a break on the runway. So he'll be aiming. We'll say that it's still runway three zero. What you will be aiming for, Ernie, is to position the, the formation two miles back on initial, or one mile back initial, whichever fits in. And at that point, we will want to have the airplanes in echelon right, because we're going to be doing left break. So, now we're in, we're in Vic. And we're going to go that. So what is your hand signal going to be to get Ernie to go over to the other side? Just a one pump? Two pumps. Remember? Oh, number three. three. Okay, sorry. One, two. Two pumps, Harry, <coughs> means that you now will go over to the number three position on the echelon, on the outside. That's right. Number two is already over there. Number two is already there, so we're in echelon right now. Yeah. So now just remember. So I'll take the two pumps from Ernie, two pumps from me to Perry. No, no. No? We're in a Vic formation. Oh, we're in a Vic formation. We're in gotcha. Vic formation. gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Just gotcha. remember the only gotcha. guy who responds to two pumps is the number three. Gotcha. Okay? Gotcha. If it's a number two, <laughs> it's a one pump. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. So then they're lined up here. One, two, and three. Lead calls. When you make the call to Windsor, Windsor Tower, Raven Formation, five miles south, 2,000 feet. Inbound landing, request an overhead break, and would like to call initial at two miles, straight in for the break. Something like that. Okay? So they will land. Hopefully today there isn't any activity, they will prove it. So we'll come in as lead hits just over the center of the, or the button of the runway there. He will call Raven lead on the brake. 
Google break, and we're using, I think it's what, three seconds recently? Been using? It'd be nice probably with the speeds and like, yeah, probably three. So the uh, number two counts 1,001, 1,000, and 2,003, then you break, and the same thing for number three. You do your break. I would suggest lead rolls out momentarily on a 90 degree after his break, just to give him a little spacing, and then just a, a complete turnaround into the runway. What, what altitude should we come over the numbers at? Mm -hmm. As a Circuit altitude, 1600. 1600, okay. Yeah, okay. thousand feet. Lee, as you're coming in, with the wind conditions like they are today, it's probably okay for you to land left, so because you'll be clearing on the left. But call it, lead landing left. Number two will come in and land on the right. Number three will come in and land on the left. Okay? Now, number two, number three, he will not want to, he's waiting because number two, he doesn't want him turning across in front of him to clear mm -hmm. the runway. Mm -hmm. So, number two, once you're down, mm -hmm. and tell him, down, down. and safe, and, safe. Okay. and now what that means is that, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm mistaken there. Number three, <coughs> when, you, when you're down and safe, you call number three down and safe, that means that Charles can now turn left in front of you, okay? Otherwise, he will stay on the right side of the runway. Gotcha. So you're not turning across in case he's coming fast in behind there. Mm -hmm. So number three, once you're down and safe, we'll call number three down and safe. That means that you're under control and that number two can turn across in front of you to clear the runway. Does uh, Charles land long? <clears throat> no. No? No. Okay, so there's enough space there. Yep. Enough clearance. We'll plan to clear well, far start probably there. If you're going fast, you can go up to the next turn off, but that's it. Okay. Yeah, I think with the, you know, with the speeds up, it might be better to go past Fox and go down, right down to Alpha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So we'll so plan on Charles needs more, yeah. more room than I do. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And it's better for me to, to stay, to land long. And, Roll, okay. land and at least roll out, right? Okay. Yep, okay. If we have a, an emergency in the air, whoever has it hopefully can call on the radio, number two engine problem or something like that, he will then drop out or the others will uh, react accordingly to it, okay? If there's a radio problem and we lose contact with the other, the signal is to tap your helmet like that, okay? And at that point, if it was the lead that had the radio problem, he would turn the lead back to his number two out here and do it by visual signals. I need to call Detroit to... Can I call from here or yep. should I use your phone? I think, no, Either it looks way. like I got a signal. I. You've all flown a fair bit of formation, so I'll just remind you, though, that if we are doing turns in in VEG, say number one, number two steps up a little bit up here, and number three steps down. If we're in echelon, we stay in the same plane. Okay, so if we're in echelon and we turn. Number two and three stay in the same altitude level with the light plane. Just uh -huh. like you. Hmm. Oh, see. But if you're in Vic, it's up like this. Down. Mm -hmm. But in Echelon, you stay in the same plane. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Uh, Anybody, any questions? Uh, Detroit City Airport, 12 o'clock. Uh, uh, on a two plane, we do step up, right? Yep. But on a three plane, 
Okay, how do you shut this off? I'm going to make a quick...